Welcome to another edition of our interview on SBAT. I remain your host, Temi Balogun. Today we have with us a multi-talented lawyer and an entrepreneur. Uh, let me welcome Mr. Laolu Oshibajo. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Okay, good. Okay, sir. Um, we want you to tell the public what's that personality, something that many don't know about you, because you know, only like people see you maybe online or they mm -hmm. met you from afar, mm -hmm. they would have a different perspective. But what's that thing that is you that they don't know? Would you like to tell them? Um, well, I think I'm an, I would describe myself as an ambivert. Okay. So in between an extrovert and an introvert, okay. I, I enjoy meeting people, but at the same time, I really enjoy solitude. I enjoy being mm -hmm. alone. alone. I enjoy my own space. Um, I I think that's that's the best way I can describe myself. I I like uh, studying a lot. I okay. enjoy learning. Okay. And I don't think that's something that people would know about me. I spend quite a bit of my time learning things that I haven't known already. Even if it doesn't affect the particular field I'm in, okay. I just generally like knowing, knowing things. Different things. And, and a pet peeve, I don't like war records. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't like war records. Okay, so do you, have, do you have a pet that you like? I like dogs. Okay, you have yes. one? I have, yes, I have dogs. Okay, okay, okay. I think that's fine. Um, okay, now, to the thing that I love most, like, that aligns very well with what we do at SPAT. Yeah. You have um, you founded a platform, an e-commerce platform, e -commerce platform that uh, promotes Nigerian products called our customer. Yeah. When I uh, stumbled on that, I was really very amazed because uh, it's yes, truly they've been talking about buy Nigeria, buy Nigeria, but it's not uh, not many people has done that. Mm -hmm. So when I stumbled on it, and I know that it has to be someone related, like I was just very happy that somebody could come up with that initiative. So I want you to tell us about our customer. What inspired you to start our customer? Okay. And how has it been so far? Okay, well, so f firstly, our customer, just for those who don't know, is an e-commerce platform that markets and sells made Nigeria products exclusively. Okay. Um, what, what inspired me to, to I guess, you know, create our customer is really um, my my desire to see you know Nigerians represented as we should, okay. as we should be on the on the world stage, even even locally as well. I I don't like the notion that just because something is Nigerian, it's not good. You know, it's a it's a notion that we we generally propagate unconsciously, uh, and it's something that you know, that kind of grinds my gears. Mm -hmm. So for me, it, it was it was really more of a personal mission to, to dispel the notion that just because something is made in Nigeria, it's not good quality, it's not fine, it's not because it's not true. Yeah. We have incredible talent. talent in our country. We have entrepreneurs making, I mean, I saw a lady in Abuja who makes handbags uh, three days ago. I, I couldn't even believe you know, the, the you know, what she's been able to accomplish with you know the very little that she has is just incredible and people are doing things and for me it's just a way for us to rally together as Nigerians to support our, our own you know our own products and truthfully uh, another reason is because I, I looked into it you know uh, in, in terms of even developing or growing our own currency yeah. the best way to do it is to buy things that are made with, within. within within a country, you know, it's 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 the reason why many other countries have stronger currencies than ours. So, in my own little way, it's just me trying my own my own best to contribute my quota to you know Nigeria's development through business and through you know uh, entrepreneurship. Okay, so the way you're putting on is the Nigerian product. Yes, this this is made in Nigeria. It's made by a guy in Abuja. His shop is in Busetu. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's nice. <laughs> okay, so um, 
His name is Zukuna. He's an exceptional tailor. He's an exceptional tailor. Yeah. It is. He looks good. Yeah. Okay, so um, you're a lawyer. Yes. And um, we're trying to get across the entrepreneurs. What's that business law that um, they are not really aware of that you can enlighten them about and help their business? You are allowed to quote sessions if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, the, the, the law is very broad. So for, for me to, I think the best thing to, to just say is um, I think sometime last year in May, okay. 15th of May, I think it was the 15th of May, um, the the Kama, which is our company, is like matters act. It's the law that governs corporate affairs in Nigeria okay. was amended essentially, and the Senate passed the bill into a law sometime around May 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the or most of the changes that were made to the former law were things that would help the the ease of doing business agenda. Okay. So, for example, one of the things that the new the new law has that the old one didn't have is that one person can uh, start a private company. A, a company limited by liability, one person, oh. as opposed to two. When now, was that? This, 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 this law came in 2018. Wow. So it's, of course, there's still a process, you know, but it's well, there. It's, 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 it's something passed, that can be been passed by the, by the legislative arm of government. Um, so so the, for me, when, when I look at things like that, you just analyze it. Why would it be better that one person can start a company as opposed to two? And I think one of the reasons is because over the last decade, yeah. uh, entrepreneurship has increased significantly in Nigeria. Yes, now, yes. If, you, if, you, if you've ever been or if you are an entrepreneur, you would understand that you want to start a company, you want to get it registered. Now, because the law requires you to have a minimum of two people, most people then go out and just look for anybody to co-sign yes. you know, the uh, incorporation papers with them. It's not necessarily someone that you would actually have done business with yes. just so that you can fulfill the letter of the law. Yes. Now, what then happens is that you are giving away a certain, you know, Perfect. part of your company to okay. someone yes. just so that you can create it. Yes. But that's when, you know, with this type of uh, change in law, it just helps people to who want to set up a business go about setting up their company, and then over time, you may now come across a person who has the kind of value that you want added to your company. And you meet somebody and like, okay, come, I want you to be a co-founder, and then you can you know go into partnership with those kind of people. Then another thing that the law, uh, the new law has that the old one did it is that it's the definition of a small company in terms of uh, turnover. So the old law you that the turnover, the, the definition of a company based on its yearly turnover was two million naira. Whereas the new law, I think it's about 120 million naira. So the 120 million naira at the end of the year is now a small company as opposed to two million. And then for assets from one million, it's now sixty-five million. So a company that has sixty-five million naira worth of assets is now is, is categorized as a small like company. a startup. Like a startup. So uh, so there, there there are quite a few of those type of changes. Most of the changes are things that essentially just help make business easier. Yeah. Majority of the changes. So it's something that people can explore uh, online and just you know look up, look up as well. Okay, so that one you said um, about people, one person can register, it's new to me, it's my first time Yes, hearing. so it's, it's a, it's, it, because it, it's, it wasn't law before, okay. so it's a new, it's a totally new uh, 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 law that, uh, I mean, it's just 2018, so it's fairly recent, yeah. but it was passed into law by the Senate, in, by the Legislative Bank of Government in 2019, so I think it still will take some time before, you know, it's, Okay, so uh, for now, you, you are not sure if people go to CAC to register, if you can, if you can register yeah. one person, so you can? I, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that, Okay. I'm, I'm currently not practicing law, <laughs> I don't want to register at the CAC either, yeah. but I'm sure if you call any of my own learned colleagues who yes. are currently practicing law, yeah. they will be able to tell you if it's the current yeah. practice. You know, sometimes it's like, okay, look at when the, pass, when the passports, uh, the new passports were you know, yeah. Commission. Yeah. It doesn't just mean that automatically everywhere you go, every passport them. office issues them. It takes time to implement these things into society. So okay, you, you're Nigeria. How long do you think this would take? Uh, like our system, looking into our system. Well, there's no, there's no real way for me to ascertain that. Some, some things are faster than others. Oh, that's... I have no uh, understanding of the inner workings of the Corporate Affairs Commission or any of those organizations. 
but my hope, I mean, I know that it's, you know, you, it's something that is easily researched. It's 2018, around sometime in May, okay. certainly, and I know that that's when it was, you know, passed out. I would actually look, look forward to that, to when it's going to be that. It's, it's easier. That problem you stated out that people are always looking out for um, someone they don't know. Yes, yes. it's what entrepreneurs do. Yeah. Because we have to just register. You just have to. <laughs> so, that's so, it. so things like that, I found is when, when I went over the, the new provisions in the law, I found it interesting. For me, as an entrepreneur, I've been in that same place where yeah. I just have to find somebody to just you know, co sign in and cooperation with yeah. just because I have to fulfill the letter of the yes, law. Yes. Whereas I would have rather share the vision. I don't necessarily share the same vision with the person, or the person isn't really adding the value that I necessarily need. So I personally, you know, I'm for I'm for for, for that you know law okay. coming into force. Yes. Okay. okay, that's a good one. That's really like you know, and I know everyone looking at this would find it very interesting. Okay, so um about impact, our customer is an impactful um brand. Apart from our customer, what other thing are you doing to impact lives in Nigeria? Okay, well, um, so our customer is is one. Yeah. And God willing, it will get to the level at which it is impacting as many people as possible when it's at scale. Um, another thing that I am very passionate about is education. Okay. And the, the simple reason is because I personally believe that it is the, it is the single most important tool to national development. Okay. The single most important tool. Um, the, sim the reason is, I mean, it's almost self explanatory. If you don't uh, you know, teach a man to fish as opposed to giving him fish, there's a reason that there's a saying like that. It, it just makes logical sense yeah. you know, to empower people you know, as opposed to just giving them things. Right? Yeah. Um, so for me, education is something that I'm most, mostly passionate about. I spend a lot of my spare time you know, doing research into education. I'm currently trying to, just by myself, in my own you know, private time, trying to crack some of the problems with you know our educational system, the curriculum, uh, you know, trying to create you know, ways that teachers can instruct students in a way that is more ambitious, okay. in a way that you know even allows the teachers to cooperate amongst themselves to create you know new kinds of tools to give the students, in a way that also allows students to create you know education that promotes creativity as opposed to stifle stifle creativity. Okay. You know? um, so, so that's one of the, the things that I am personally passionate about. I spend my time, I go to schools, secondary schools, primary schools, if I'm invited sometimes to, you know, to talk to students, also to just assess where it's at, you know. And System is a... Yeah, but education is, is something that I, I, I'm 100% you know, behind. I, I think we have to, all of us, all of us have to, to work together to solve it because the truth is that the, the, the type of um, uh, you know, development that we are all looking forward to is only really possible in a society that is properly educated. Okay. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you build the best you know, infrastructure that you can imagine, yeah. but the people who, who have access to it aren't properly educated, it's not, it's not it's, you're just going to have you know, a, a mismanagement yes. of, of those things. So it's, it's for, for me, it's important that you know, we, we start even from the little children now, yeah. so that all across the country, if we, if, if we can get to that point where there's a new way that we're learning in Nigeria, years from now, that's when we'll be able to see, see the benefits when a new generation of Nigerians have learned in a new way. You know, they, not, not the way that I learned when I was in school, for example. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, it's been a very enlightening session with Mr. Lao Shibajo. Let's go on a short break, we'll be right back. A lawyer and uh, entrepreneur, the founder of our customer, Mr. Lao Lewis Ibajo. Uh, it's been an um, enlightening session with you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me take you back to your undergraduate days as a law student. Okay. Tell me one thing, or tell us one thing you like and one thing you dislike about being a law student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think 
think I, I, I can easily do the one that I dislike. Okay. Um, it, it was hard. Okay. Yeah. It, it was. It was a lot, especially especially when it came to exams. Okay. Um, you know, I I spent months studying months before even an exam is even being thought about. I yeah, spent so many months like just studying and, and it never seemed to even you never seem to really even be so scratching enough. the surface <laughs> of, of the material that you have to go through. Okay. I, I remember some of my textbooks were, you know, as as stickers. I don't know what I can use to describe it in right now, but like, you know, and and look at so so an encyclopedia, even picker. <laughs> I had one particular text textbook that was thicker than an encyclopedia. So so, so it was just hard. It was just extremely. There was a lot of pressure, um, you know, on, on you. I remember when I was at the Nigerian Law School it, it, during our exam period, during the final exams. Yeah. In fact, it, it was just like something out of a movie. But also very another thing that I enjoy was that you are not in it alone. You know, so all my classmates were all there together, okay. working together. In fact, some of Law school really taught me a lot about teamwork in a very okay. unusual way. I, mean, I don't think most people expect to learn that from law school, but there's a, there's a you know there's a there's this kind of you know family vibe you know that you find you know when faced with adversity, okay. which is the exam. People generally <laughs> oh, so the adversity yeah, exam. So okay. people generally seem to come together. Yeah. You know, and you know, work together. We're all studying. We're all trying to make sure that you know it, and I know it, and you understand it, and I understand it, and testing each other to also, you know, as the Bible says, as iron sharpened iron. You know, so so I I I that that's something I think I say. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Okay, so to the Nigerian youths, um, what would be your advice to them? Okay, what should this? Um, well. Many, many things are coming to my mind, but I'll just try to, to streamline it. I think one of the, the, the greatest things I could say to you know my you know my brothers and sisters here in Nigeria is that we, we, we should learn all of us, myself included, okay. learn to 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 study processes okay. as opposed to finished products, okay. both in people, both in products, both in Things learn to study and focus on processes as opposed to a finished product. I will explain. Um, if you look at a person, for example, most people look at a person and just you know want to be a particular person, person. right? Because of the person <laughs> appears, especially in this world of social media. Social media. Whereas we are not interested in understanding the process that this person went through to get this finished finished look, right? Um, because the truth is that there really isn't any finished look. The, even the person that we're looking at is still in, in, a, in, a, in an involved in an active process, process. as he or she is at that point in time. So it's more important to, to go and look at the process through which the person you know, went through to get to wherever it is that they are. If you look at um, products as well, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, the, an iPhone, yeah. I think it's probably one of the most, if not the most revolutionary product in the 21st century, you know, uh, under the umbrella of smartphones and smart technology. Um, the, the, the iPhone isn't a finished product. It's still in a process. It's constantly evolving. There's always new things that they're bringing up, yeah. you know, updates and yes. things like that. Even yes. though, you know, if you hold it, it looks like a finished product. But yeah. it's, technically, it's not. Yes. So if, if my own advice to us as Nigerians is that we, we have to start learning or teaching even our children to be more inquisitive and to try to learn processes. Can you imagine if the first time a telephone came to Nigeria, as opposed to being marveled by the technology, we broke it apart to understand what it was made up of? I, if that was how we approach things, yeah. I genuinely believe that we would have been much further along as a collective, as a group, as a nation that we are today. I believe that I may be wrong, but it's just yeah. my own personal <laughs> opinion. Okay. Um, so, so that's one thing I would advise all of us to invite. Uh, secondly, 
uh, humility, and thirdly, I, 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 I think it's just important that we we don't uh, that, we, that we, we continually trust God. Okay. We just trust. We have to just you know, trust Him and 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 seek to be to be led by Him in all in all that we do. So uh, for, for 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 us as young people, uh, and also learn to defer our gratification. Okay, please break that. Um, that that essentially, if you if you get some money today, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as opposed to buying a car, for example, yeah. you want to, because the car is a gratification, it's yeah. like, uh, you are rewarding yourself yes. because you have the money. Yeah. As opposed to buying a car, you know, maybe use the money to invest in some kind of assets that will produce income. Okay. So it's the income from that asset that yeah. you can later use to buy a car. Okay. So you've deferred your gratification, okay. but in the process, you've You've built something that is creating value for you over a longer period of time. Okay. So, so generally, it's a, it's a principle that I personally try to imbibe. I, I actually learned it uh, when I was much younger, and okay. you know, uh, an uncle of mine actually taught it to me. Okay. And it's something that stuck with me even I was 14 years old at the time. But I never forgot the phrase "defer your gratification." So that is something I I aspire to. It's something that I try to live by. So I would definitely advise. Anybody who is willing to, to also do the same. Okay, thank you very much. You've really um, impacted so many people because a lot of people watching this, and I think for someone of your caliber to be telling them this, it's something that you know you work with and they would be able to take it on as well. Okay, so um, the last part of this uh, interview is more fun because um, something you love to do. So we're not going to be all serious, serious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we want you to sing. We know we love, I, I know you love singing personally. I know that you mm -hmm. love singing um, gospel songs that touches the souls, and I think a lot of people follow you for that online. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like you to maybe it's like one step, one minute, just sing something. One minute, sing or sing what? Sing something that like songs like the songs that you sing online. That I sing online. Yes. Just choose one of your best. <laughs> I know it is no, just for you. My voice may not be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be best. good. Yeah, but we like it that way. Let me just. I have a song that I have on the list too. Okay. Could be a special number. Yeah. Okay. The song is called He Knows My Name. Okay. And it's by Tommy Walker. Okay. Um, I'm just going to sing in a very long tone. Yes, yes, we are okay with it. So it goes, I have a father, he calls me his own, he'll never leave me, no matter where I go. He knows my name. He knows my every thoughts. He sees each tear that falls, and he hears me when I call. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> so, so I love very it. Very meaningful to you. To me so, what, when you listen to that song, what do you feel, or when you sing it? Uh, the truth is that the song actually, I I stumbled across it in 2015 when I gave my life to Christ. Okay. I was living in Toronto at the time. Um, I was at school there for, for maybe about like 19 months. Okay. Um, and um, I, so in 2015, I gave my life to Christ. I didn't really know much about, you know, him. So okay. I just go on YouTube. YouTube was my go-to place, okay. you know, to search for, for, for gospel music. And, and this particular song, I just stumbled across it. Okay. But Every time I sang the song, it's, it's, it, it just blew my mind. And you know, God who created everything knows my name. Wow. He hears my thoughts. Even when I'm you know, crying, even when I'm feeling down, He hears me when I call. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's an it's incredible awesome. no, yeah. you know, a, a reality that yeah. you know, God Almighty hears me. So for me it's it, 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 it meant so much to me, especially when I first came back to Christ. Okay. Wow.
Nigerians that are talented, that have products that they would like to have on our customer? How do they um, get it across? Okay, so um, I mean it's very simple. You go to the website www.ourcustomer.com. Uh, our customer is spelled A W A and then customer. Uh, if, you, if you go to the site, there's a sign in button. Also on the site, there are, there are buttons that can lead you to register for you know, register products or list your products on the website. Okay. But it's very, very straightforward. Okay. In fact, most people have complimented on how simple it is. It is. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, okay. This is www. How many W's was that? Three. <laughs> <laughs> www.ourcustomer.com Thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay, well, we've come to the end of this edition of Expert Interview. I personally have learned a lot from Mr. Laudu. I don't know if you have, but I know watching this interview, you will have learned a thing or two, just like me. Um, stay motivated, learn from this. Till next time, I remain Timmy Balogun. Thank you. <laughs>